Welcome. Welcome to Worship at Olivet Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We're very glad you're here. Our worship words this morning were written by Booker T. Washington, and he wrote, Lay hold of something that will help you, and then use it to help somebody else. Let us ponder these words as we start with our worship. We come to worship as witnesses to one another, to live out our baptism and grow into the body of Christ. With waiting hearts, we come to worship. Let us pray. God of holy anticipation, you have promised that you would return at a time unknown to us. Make us ready so that when you do return, we might be welcomed into your kingdom with open arms. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us sing a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a favorite of all ages. Jesus loves me, this I know. Please join with me now in our prayer of confession. Our praise, our worship, our singing, however beautiful and heartfelt, must be accompanied by the work of justice and community. What pleases God is to have justice pour from our lives like waters and righteousness from our work like an ever-flowing stream. Surely the good news is that God's grace flows through our lives, refreshing and making all things new. Let this grace flow from us as justice and righteousness, that our lives and our work may bless our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Our gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, and this is the parable of the ten bridesmaids. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, 
but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there would not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Here ends the reading of God's word. May it prove to be a blessing to our hearing, our understanding, and our living in the days ahead. Amen. This passage, the parable of the ten bridesmaids, occurs in the Gospel of Matthew after Jesus is already talking to his disciples about what they should be expecting at the end times when the world as they know it is disappears, transitions into the kingdom of God. And so this particular parable is urging them to be ready for change. You still need to go about your daily business, but you need to plan ahead accordingly and be prepared. Now think about all the times that you've been in that position. Be prepared. Here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, for those of us who have lived here for some time, when the nuclear power plant was built and then became active, we were all told to be ready. To be ready for what? Well, the worst case scenario was the answer. We needed to be ready for a nuclear accident. And back in the day when we had, um, most of us had um, landline phones, of course the phone books had escape routes that we should take to get out of the city quickly as possible and away from any nuclear blast from and so the idea was we were always to be prepared. So at the ready, you're supposed to have things that you might need for maybe three days of travel, uh, pet food if you had pets, ways to evacuate your animals at a moment's notice, a communication plan. And meanwhile, you are supposed to go about your daily lives as if the nuclear power plant would it would never happen because nobody really wanted that eventuality to ever happen for there to be an accident and the necessity to leave the city quickly so how do you keep that preparedness going well as it happens now cedar rapids is in the position where that nuclear power plant is now retired and the danger is past. I would hazard a guess that most of those living here in Cedar Rapids haven't been prepared for an evacuation due to the nuclear power plant for many years. We have had a horrible time waiting and we grew tired and complacent since there hadn't been an accident, why would there be one in the future? And why would we need to prepare? And why would we need to set aside provisions for three days when we needed those for our daily lives? And so we failed to do so. I have a feeling that that's really what Jesus is trying to tell people in this parable. That it's 
You always need to be prepared and you can never be complacent. Not while you're waiting and the waiting is the issue. Think about it. From the time that the disciples were told by Jesus this parable and the time that it was finally written down in the Gospel of Matthew, there had been at least two generations that had lived and waited and set aside provisions and still kept on with the mission of Jesus in their daily lives. So essentially they were juggling the present and yet planning for a future they had no idea when it would break in. Now, there are many instances, I'm sure, in your life as well as in mine that we juggle these things and think nothing of it. But Jesus wants to caution us. Jesus wants to caution us and say, continue to do what you need to do to advance the kingdom of God. Transform lives. Continue your outreach and and telling individuals about what God can do in their lives and what they need to do to help others. Like Booker T. Washington had written, if you find something that helps you, it's going to help somebody else and use it to somebody else's advantage. Use it. When we look at the bridesmaids, the five foolish and the five wise, Look at what happened. The five foolish ones did not set aside oil all, all the time that they were waiting because they were using it in their daily lives. What would be the point with the delay for the bridegroom? What would be the point of keeping aside oil that you needed to use? I mean, that's an investment that they could probably hardly afford. But it says the wise ones did have a flask of oil. Now here's the issue though with this parable, and it only goes so far, doesn't it? When the foolish uh, bridesmaids ask to use some of the oil that's in the wise bridesmaids' flasks, what do the wise ones tell them? Go get your own. Well, that's really counter to Jesus' message, isn't it? Isn't it about sharing resources? Yes, that's very true. And that there's a problem with the parable, but that's not its main focus. The main focus is how to prepare for the long wait, continue to do what the Lord wants us to do in this life while we wait for the inbreaking of the kingdom of God, the return of Jesus, the bridegroom. How shall we do that? It's a balance, and each one of us must be prepared for this, and to help each other prepare as well. There it's true, there will be some who will have sense to set aside and always be prepared, and not to be complacent because it has been centuries of waiting. But the question is, how ready are we for the change that's ahead. For that matter, how ready are we for most of the changes that occur to our lives? In the church, we hope that our faith is strong enough for today's challenges and for the waiting even in the darkness of the night and for the day that will come when Jesus returns. So the oil, the bridesmaids, the waiting, and more waiting. That's part of the story. But here we are 2,000 years later, and the delay is long. And scripture tells us no one knows, save for God, the hour that the kingdom will inbreak into our, our own times. But we know that God is active now in our own lives. And we know that we need to be active as well. That inactivity is not what Jesus wants. 
we are encouraged to transform this world so that it becomes more peaceful and filled with more justice and more love for neighbor. When I think of what we have as an example in our own time, is I think of Jimmy and Rosalind Carter. Here they are, and they could well sit down and enjoy life in quiet. But they are enjoying life serving others. They are building houses. Imagine somebody in their mid-90s building houses with their own health issues. But instead of turning inward while they wait for Jesus' return, they've turned outward and have for many decades of their lives. We should always live our lives as though Christ is coming today. And it's true of every one of us that we may be tempted to sit this one out and let things happen when Jesus returns and not prepare, not have a stash of oil, so to speak, not prepared and become complacent. Keeping the faith is not going to be easy. Others have found that to be so. However, there are so many around us who need Jesus' kind and loving arms and hearts and hands right now. And you and I are those hands and hearts and hand. Let us reach out. Let us reach out while we wait to continue to be active, to continue to prepare, and never to become complacent and fall asleep. We can trust that the Lord will return. But we can also trust that we are essential to the kingdom of God. For today, during the long wait, and for tomorrow when the Lord returns. Let this be our hope. Let this be the wisdom that we continue to share with others to stay strong, stay faithful, and stay hope-filled. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let us come before our tithes and our offerings, and these are all of the gifts that God has continued to give to us, the gifts of patience, the gifts of hope, the gifts of love, the gifts of joy, and even the smallest things. The gifts that continue to make us willing and faithful servants in Jesus' name to all of our neighbors. Let us pray together as we dedicate the gifts that God has given to us. God, we have come and given generously of our gifts. Take, bless, and multiply them so that they may be a blessing in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join with me now in, in our prayer of the people. Holy One, we move through our days with dreams of your festival of justice. And we dream of the honeymoon times when you do return in the kingdom of God, of an, an inclusive community with peace and justice for all. We give thanks for all the ways that you light our paths and keep us in the ways of hope. We wait the way of your love. We hope for those who have received or experienced troubling or joyful noise, news in these days. And we pray for our own hearts that impatiently 
stretch ahead of us and expectations of ourselves, our community, and your holy work with us. God, we wait for you. We pray for those who await release from prison or fear or a renewed sense of your presence in their lives. We pray for all those who wait for the peace that comes with your justice in their relationships, in their homeland, and in all the places of creation. We pray. We pray for your love, your love to envelop those who are struggling with COVID in relative isolation in hospitals throughout this country and abroad. Lord, give them peace. Let them know that they are not forgotten, although they may not have family and friends around them. And Lord, we pray for all those medical caregivers who give their all every day to treat people, who go home at night and stress about who has died under their watch that day. Lord, give them peace. Give them peace and patience and renew their strength to go back and fight this virus for another day. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join in singing our closing song, God Be With You.
May you keep your lamps filled and your hearts open, ready for change. Choose God and rejoice in the many ways you will see God's love change this world. Thank you for being with us in worship today at Olivet Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We are the little church on the corner with the big heart. May you have a blessed week.